Kraft Foods Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. Gildersleeve is brought to you transcribed by the Kraft Foods Company. Twenty years ago, the Kraft Foods Company introduced a wonderful new salad dressing, a superbly smooth, delicious-tasting salad dressing called Miracle Whip. Miracle Whip was so remarkably good that it soon became the most popular salad dressing ever created. Now Miracle Whip outsells the next 20 leading brands of salad dressing combined, and good cooks everywhere depend on it to make their salads better tasting. To bring out the best in your salads, use the one and only Miracle Whip salad dressing. Well, as you may remember, the great Gildersleeve is taking his vacation from the water department on sort of a day here and day there basis this summer. And the plan seems to be working out satisfactorily enough for the water commissioner, but his nephew Leroy doesn't like the idea. And on this bright August morning, he has cornered his uncle in the living room to register a mighty protest. It's a crying shame. That's what it is, Unc. Now, Leroy. It's a crying shame. Stop bellowing. What's a crying shame? Here it is August. Everybody else has gone someplace. Everybody else is doing something. What are we doing for a vacation? Sitting here like a couple of bumps on a log. Leroy, that's not true. We've gone places this summer. Ah! <laughs> well, we have. I've taken my vacation a day at a time, and we've gone here, and we've gone there. Yeah, here and there. Fine vacation. Well, we've had seven days all together, and I have seven days more to go. Yeah, I may take off a couple of days this week. Well, that's no vacation, Unc. A day here, a day there. It's like eating a good dinner one bite at a time and taking all day for it. <laughs> it's cold before you're half finished. You've forgotten what you've eaten, and when you're through, you're still hungry. <laughs> you will. And furthermore, and furthermore. Leroy, stop shaking your finger in my face. You're not keeping your promise. What promise? You made a promise and you're not keeping it. You made a promise to a little kid. What little kid? Me! <laughs> Last winter you said that this summer we could get a cabin at a lake and stay for a week. That's what you said. Yeah, I said that. We'll get a cabin at a lake and stay for a week. Those were your very words. When did I say that? On the 18th of February at 9.15 in the morning. <laughs> Leroy. Ask Bertie. Just ask Bertie. Somebody else, Bertie? Bertie, didn't I say he and I could get a cabin at a lake this summer, didn't he? Last winter he said it, didn't he? Seems I recall something about going to a cabin. There, you see, Unc, you see? Yeah, all right, all right. If I said we'd get a cabin, then that's what we'll do. We will? Oh, boy! Yoo-hoo! <laughs> Leroy, don't grab me like that. You could tear my apron off. We're going up to a lake. Crazy, man. Cool, crazy. You aren't going to change your mind, are you, Unc? You aren't going to back out? Certainly not. There's one thing your uncle doesn't do, my boy, is change his mind. My word is my bond. You know that. Yeah, I know, but you... Quit worrying, Leroy. If your uncle said you're going to go, you're going to go. That's right. He ain't wishy. No, indeed. He ain't washy. No, sir. He ain't wishy-washy. You're going to go. Well, I just want to be sure. Because there have been a few times... Leroy, when I say I'm going to do something, I do it. Make a decision and stand by it. Where do you plan to go, Miss Gilsey? Tomorrow. Oh, just a minute. I was just thinking when you and Leroy go to the lake, you won't be needing Bertie that week. Yeah, that's right. It'll give you a week off, Bertie. Yes, it'll give me a chance to visit my sister. Where do you plan to go, Miss Gilsey? Today. Leroy. You tell me what you're going to need, Miss Gilsey, and I'll start packing. Uh, fine, Bertie. Yeah, man, we're going. Look, here in the paper. There's an ad. Cabin for rent. I marked it while I was eating breakfast. Here, you see it? Yeah. Right between the jelly and the syrup. <laughs> Sounds pretty good. Yeah, I see. Rustic cabin on lake, furnished. Big trees, good fishing, $35 a week. $35 a week? Yeah, that's the rent. Rent? That's robbery. But, Uncle, it's furnished with trees and fish. Yeah, I don't care how it's furnished. That's ridiculous. Oh, but, Uncle. Oh, yeah, my boy, let's not get carried away. Just because it's the summer season, these cabin people think they can put their rates sky high. Oh, by George, they may make a pigeon out of somebody else. They're not going to snooker your old uncle. I can tell you that. You mean we're not going? 
Yeah, I didn't say that. We're going to get a cabin. But this year, I'm going to play it smart. No, no. Uh, can't we just... Take... Leroy, there are ways of getting things without going out and throwing your money around. If you're ever going to be a success, success, you've got to learn to use your head. Be shrewd, like me. Yeah? Well, I mean it. Why should I pay good money for a cabin on the lake? Peavy has one he never uses. Right on a lake. He even has a boat. With a steamboat whistle on it. No kidding? Absolutely. And he'll be glad to let us use it. For nothing. Are you sure? Certainly. Yeah, I need some cigars anyway. I'll get down to the drugstore and ask him right now. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, you see, my boy? Already this morning, you've learned two things. Always do what you say you're going to do. And be shrewd. Yeah. You sure teach me a lot, Unc. You will. I try. You know something, Unc? I ought to just quit school and follow you around. What a fine boy. What are you slowing down for, Unc? Aren't you going in the drugstore? Well, I'm going in, but you wait out here for me. I want to listen while you ask him. Nothing doing. I may have to use diplomacy on Petey, and you're too eager. If he thinks I want the cabin, he might get standoffish. And I've got to make him force it on me. But I thought you said... Never mind. I'll handle it. Okay. Hello, Petey. Yeah, good morning, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> what can I do for you today? Well, first of all, you can give me a handful of cigars. The 15 centers. 15 centers today? Living it up a little, are you? <laughs> well, you know me, Petey. Yes, I do. That's why I wondered. <laughs> Uh, just put them on my bill. Very yeah, well. You know, I spend a lot of money with you every month, Petey. Well, I spend a lot of money with you. You don't exactly give that water away, you know. I can see he's going to be hard to handle. Uh, uh, going any place on your vacation this month, Petey? Yes, I'm spending my vacation in the quietest place I can think of. Oh? Uh, where are you going? Home. Mrs. Peavy's going to be away for a week. <laughs> well, nice idea. Uh, thought possibly you might be going up to your cabin at Moose Lake. No, I'm staying home. Yeah, I'm kind of looking around for a place to stay, uh, spend a week. Sort of a cabin, maybe? You're on a lake? No. I noticed several of them advertised in the paper. <laughs> yes, but the prices are pretty steep. In fact, it occurred to me that maybe one of my very good friends, some generous fellow, might offer to let me use his cabin. Well, yes, yeah, some fellow might do that. <laughs> I'd been thinking in terms of Moose Lake. Moose Lake, it's a nice place. What a tough customer. He isn't giving an inch. Uh, you, you did say you weren't going to use your cabin. Well, I have no plans right at the moment. Let's see, who do I know who had a cabin at Moose Lake who's a friend of yours? Cron found it, Petey. Quit beating around the bush. If you don't want me to use your cabin, come right out and say so. I didn't say anything either way. <laughs> well, say something either way. Doesn't matter to me. I know dozens of people who'd be delighted to let me use their cabin. Well, then, why don't you use your head? Because I like yours better. Yeah, I mean, uh, you're a better friend of mine. You yeah, look, Petey. I'm not being pushy, but how about it? How about what? Using your cabin. You don't have to be diplomatic like I am. Just come right out and say yes or no. You know, I can take no for an answer. He's never taken it yet. <laughs> well, Peavy? All right, you can use the cabin. Well, fine. I knew you would. <laughs> Good friend. Where do you keep the key? It's hanging up on a nail right next to the fish poles in the back room. The key is inside the cabin? How do I get in? Call any window. Oh, my goodness. Well, I used to keep the key under the doormat, but there's a squirrel who lives in an oak tree in front of the place, and every winter he used to take the key and put it up in his nest up in the tree. Oh? I figured it was easier to climb in the window than to climb in the tree. <laughs> well, thanks a lot, Petey. You're a real friend. We'll take good care of the cabin and the boat. And when I come back, I'll bring you a big, fat bass. All right, and have a good time. We will. Thanks again, old friend. 
See you in a week. Bye. Good bye. How'd you do, Uncle? Did you get it? Are we going? Did you get the cabin? You bet. I had to be very tactful about it, but by shrewd maneuvering, I swung the deal. Oh, boy. Yeah, you see? We got a fine cabin, and it isn't costing us a nickel. We'll leave in the morning. Unc, you're a genius. I'll go home and start getting stuff together. Yeah, you do that. I'm going to stop by Floyd's barber shop and pick up my boots that he bought. Okay, but don't get a haircut or a shave. We're going to rough it, boy. We've got to look grizzled. You're all right, my boy. On your way. Scoot. <laughs> in the back room heating up some glue. Glue? Yeah, one of my customers broke his mug. His shaving mug. Oh. <laughs> Climb up in the chair, Commish. What'll it be, a haircut? No, nothing today, Floyd. I just stopped by to pick up my boots. Oh, yeah, them. Yeah, I'm pretty proud of myself this morning, Floyd. What'd you do? Cut off the mayor's water? <laughs> <laughs> nope. I just gave little Leroy a fine object lesson in shrewd business. Yeah? Yeah, he was all fired up about running a cabin. $35 a week. Beat the guy down to 30 huh? Certainly not. I got the cabin for nothing. Oh? Yeah, I fast-talked Peavy into letting me use his. Free. Well, you can't get him any cheaper than that. How come you got Peavy's cabin? Because he practically insisted that I take it. That's why. And it's a fine cabin. Yeah, it's Okay. But you ought to see Ed Hinkle's place up at Eagle Lake. Now, there's a real layout. Oh? Well, there's nothing wrong with Peavy's place. Oh, sure, it's all right. But Hinkle's cabin makes Peavy's look like a chicken house. He's got everything in it. Big fireplace, freezer, front porch, right over the lake. You can sit in your rocking chair and catch rock bass. Hmm, sounds pretty good. Hey, hey, wait a minute. There's Ed's boy coming down the street. Hey, bud! Come here, man. What's the matter, Floyd? Come on in. I want you to meet a friend of mine. Bud, this here is Mr. Gildersleeve. I'm glad to meet you, Mr. Gildersleeve. Hello, Bud. Bud and his dad's been customers of mine from way back. I give Bud his duck tail here. How do you like that? Pretty classy, huh? Yeah, fine. Looks just like a duck. In back. <laughs> Bud, uh, I was telling the commissioner here about the swell layout you folks got up at Eagle Lake. Oh, yeah, it's a sharp deal. Guess you folks spend a lot of time up there, huh, kid? Not too much anymore. Too many pretty girls up there. Yeah, too many. This keeps you away? Yeah, my mom decided it was dangerous. Those girls are walking around the beach all the time, you know. Yeah? Yeah. And it gets my dad pretty confused. He keeps walking off the end of the dock all the time. <laughs> oh? Last time we were up there, he wondered why he couldn't start the outboard motor. He had the rope wound around Mom's head. <laughs> that was the last time we were up there. You know, I can see your mother's point of view. And your father's, too. Mom don't like it up there. Dad does. Yes, well. Well, I got a rope. Glad to have met you, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yeah, glad to have met you, bud. I'll see you, Floyd. Okay, bud. Now, you see, Commish? If I'd known you were looking for a place, I could have got their cabin for you. Yeah, it sure sounds better than Peavy's. Oh, it's a real establishment. Uh, think you could still get it, Floyd? Sure, all I got to do is call Ed. All right, George, I'll tell Peavy something's come up. I can get out of it. Sure, the Peavy won't mind. I'll go call Ed and tell him you want to use the cabin. Yeah, tell him I'm the water commissioner, Floyd. I don't know, Commish. The pressure's been pretty low lately. I'll just tell him you're a friend of mine. Yeah, all right, all right. Yeah, I'll be along in a minute. I was talking to the mailman. I told him we were going up to Moose Lake. Yeah, well, uh... He says if we catch any moose, we can give him one. He's a cut-up. Yeah. Well, uh, things have changed a little. We're not going to Moose Lake. Not going? No, I've got a better deal. I'm getting a much nicer cabin up at Eagle Lake. But, Aunt, you already told Mr. Peavy you'd take his place. But, Leroy, this one is better. A lot better. Oh, for corn's sake, why don't we just rent the cabin that's advertised in the paper? No, my boy, I told you this morning, you've got to be smart. The better deal comes along, take the better deal. Yeah, but you said always do what you say you're going to do, and you told people... Well, this is different. Well, what about a bird in the hand being better than two in the bush? 
That's just an old-fashioned saying. There are times when the shrewd thing to do is to take the two in the bushes. Uh, okay, you can say so long. You bet. You leave the planning to me, my boy. Going up to Eagle Lake, strictly first class. <laughs> right, George Gildersleeve, you're a shrewd operator. <laughs> Greg Gildersleeve will be back in just a minute. How's your imagination tonight? Well, let's try it. Just imagine a shimmering lime gelatin mold filled with luscious bits of peaches, pears, pineapple, and cherries and nestled on a bed of cool, fresh lettuce. Mmm, that's a salad masterpiece. But it's not quite complete. You need a salad dressing, too. One that'll bring out the very best in your salad. And the salad dressing to choose is the one with the flavor millions of folks call just exactly right. Miracle Whip Salad Dressing. Miracle Whip Salad Dressing has a lively, teasing flavor, a different flavor you won't find in any other salad dressing. Because Miracle Whip is made from a secret recipe that combines the best qualities of old-fashioned boil dressing and fine mayonnaise. So many people like Miracle Whip so much, it's become the most popular salad dressing ever created, outselling the next 20 leading brands of salad dressing combined. Enjoy delicious, satiny Miracle Whip on your salad. Now, during summer, chances are salads are a more important part of your menu than ever, so make sure they taste their best. Make them with Miracle Whip. There's only one Miracle Whip salad dressing, so be sure you see the name on the jar you buy. Miracle Whip, made only by Kraft. Now let's get back to the great Gildersleeve. After considerable effort, the great man talked Mr. Peavy into the free use of his cabin at Moose Lake. That was fine, but then a better proposition presented itself. An even better cabin at Eagle Lake. This through a friend of Floyd Munson's. So now we find our water commissioner heading back to Peavy's drugstore. You wonder how I'll explain this to people. I could tell them the truth. Uh, No point in doing that. I'll have to be diplomatic. Hello, Peavy. You back already? I think you made a pretty quick trip. No, we haven't exactly gone yet. The fact is, a couple of unforeseen circumstances have come up. Yeah, unexpectedly. Change your mind about going, did you? Well, in a way, yes. Yeah, I got to thinking about it, Petey. Decided it was just too much to ask of even an old friend like you, borrowing your cabin. Well, just as long as I know what you're going to do. It's just that I don't like to impose on my friends. You never can tell what might happen. Leroy might put his foot through a window or something. It's not Leroy's feet that I'm worried about. It's you probably have a lot of treasured personal belongings in the cabin, and if something should be lost, I'd never forgive myself. Well, if you don't want the cabin... No, it's not that I don't want it, Pete. Well, then go ahead and go. Petey, stop being so bullheaded. I'm only thinking of you. I'm protecting your interests. Protecting me from who? Me. When I get out in the woods, I'm dangerous. I might wreck your cabin completely. Oh, it isn't worth taking a chance, Pete. No, I guess it isn't. You know, I'd rather give up the whole idea than run even the slightest risk of losing your friendship. No. Friendship like ours is too priceless a thing to gamble with. You know, I much prefer to look forward to a pleasant and ever-ripening companionship with my old friend, Pete. And Mr. Gildersleeve, where is this other cabin that you located? <laughs> Somebody eagerly, oh, Pete! <laughs> can't carry it in a pile like that, Leroy. you got to get a box or something. No, nah, we'll just heave it in the car, and when we get up there, we'll heave it out again. We're going to rough it. You're going to get it so rough, you're never going to find anything. Bertie! Leroy! Out in the kitchen, Unc! Well, it's all set. Floyd made the arrangements with Mr. Hinkle, and I explained to Petey. 
Leroy says you ain't going to Mr. Peavy's cabin. No, I found a much better one, Bertie. This is a veritable palace in the pines. Has mattresses on the beds and an outboard motor. Real class. I thought we were going to rough it, huh? Oh, we'll rough it. Don't worry. You can do the cooking. I still think we should have stopped with Mr. Peavy's cabin. Leroy, stop being short-sighted. Just because you had a ham sandwich, would you refuse a whole ham? Uncle Lord, anybody home? Hey, there's Marge. We're out in the kitchen, Miss Marjorie. Hi, everybody. What's going on, Anki? Well, Leroy and I are taking off for a week. Going up to a beautiful cabin on Eagle Lake. Oh, wonderful. At least we think we're going. Unc's changing his mind so fast, we're never sure. Leroy, I'm not changing my mind, simply because I found a better place. Probably the nicest cabin in the whole area. Well, whose cabin is it, Unky? It belongs to Ed Hinkle. There's everything. Beautiful spot. Oh, the Hinkle place. I've been up there. How is it? Well, it's all right. It... What do you mean, all right? Well, it's clean. Why didn't you tell me you were looking for a cabin, Unky? I could have gotten a Johnson's place. Johnson's? Oh, for corn's sake. <laughs> Leroy, stop grumbling. What's this Johnson place like? Oh, it's gorgeous. It's a summer home. Electric kitchen, air conditioning, a beautiful speedboat. Oh, brother. Look, Unk. Leroy, don't interrupt. I'm thinking. Why don't we just rent the place that's advertised in the paper? Leroy... Hey, Marjorie, that Johnson place sounds pretty good. But we want to rough it. Yeah, I've never driven one of those speedboats. Yeah, I'll bet that's really something. Are you changing your mind again, Unc? Yeah, I'm not changing my mind. I'm just using strategy, that's all. Yeah, I'll be back in a minute. Where are you going? I'll be back in a minute. <laughs> Commish, all ready to take off for Eagle Lake? Floyd, old friend, something has come up. Yeah? Yeah, I got to thinking. It's a terrific responsibility taking over somebody else's expensive cap. Oh, don't worry about it. Ed Hinkle's a good friend of mine. I've been cutting his hair for years. That's just it, Floyd. I want you to keep on cutting his hair. What are you getting at, Commish? I just don't want to take the responsibility, Floyd. If something should happen, if we should knock a hole in the speedboat or he something... He don't have a speedboat. Yeah, I mean the outboard. The outboard. One little mistake and you'd lose a friend and a good customer. And i never forgive myself. You mean you're not taking the place? No, it's not that I don't want to, Floyd. I'm just thinking of you and your customers. It's your livelihood, Floyd. And as much as I'd like to use the Hinkle's cabin, I just can't bring myself to risk it. Okay, yeah, I appreciate their offer, deeply. But I value our friendship, too. I wouldn't have anything destroy that friendship. Absolutely not. Kamish. Right. Whose place you got lined up now? <laughs> Boy, you too? Suspicious barber. <laughs> Two bits he went to Floyd's barber shop. Well, everything's packed. All you gotta have now is a place to go. Leroy! Yeah? Where's Marjorie? She went next door. What are we doing now, Unc? We're doing the shrewd thing. Leroy, we're going to the Johnson summer home. But, Unc, we might as well go to a hotel. You know, this is better than any hotel in town. You can drive the speedboats. Speedboats, air conditioning. What did we start out with, Unc? Just a nice, simple little cabin by a lake. Now, look, we got a production. You bet. We're going strictly first class. Right, George, I can see myself sitting on the veranda of the Johnson Summer Estate. Big cigar. Waving to the yachts as they sail by. I got your things all ready, Mr. Gilsey. You want to put them in the car? Yeah, I don't know, Bertie. I may not even take my car. It's pretty old. How do we get up there? Hitchhike? <laughs> Certainly not. Going up to a swanky place like the Johnsons, I may rent a little better-looking car. A convertible, maybe. Throw my golf clubs in the back seat. Oh, brother. Hi, Anki. Oh, there you are, my dear. Well, we're ready to go. Well, have a nice time. It's a good thing you're going to the Hinkle's cabin, Anki. 
Who was it? I just phoned the Johnsons. The maid said they're up at their summer home. They're up there? Mm-hmm. We couldn't have gotten it anyway. Zeke trapped. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> What's the matter? Remember the story about the dog standing on the bridge with a bone in his mouth? Yes. Looked down in the water and saw his reflection. Thought it was another dog with a bigger bone. So he dropped the one he had and grabbed for the bigger one. What did he wind up with? Nothing. <laughs> all right, Leroy. Leroy, what are you talking about? Ladies and gentlemen, introducing my uncle, the one and only Throckmorton T. Bone Dropper. <laughs> <laughs> Leroy, that will do. Anki, you didn't give up the Hinkle's cabin before you knew it. Oh, yes, he did. Oh, for heaven's sakes, why didn't you tell me? Well, never mind. It's too late now. Leroy. I know what you're going to say, yes, and I got it right here. The ad section of the paper, cabins for rent. Yes, yes. Just come with me, Huck. The telephone is right this way. Oh, I know where the phone is. Here's the same ad. Cabin on lake, furnished. Yeah. All right. I'll call him up. What's the number? 476. Hmm. Where have I heard that number before? One of your girlfriends? No. No, it just sounds for me. Well, hurry up, huh? I can't dial any faster. $35 a week for a cabin. I wonder who this robber is. Peavy's Pharmacy. Oh! <laughs> again in just 30 seconds. Do you like chicken salad? Then try this unusually delicious variation. Add drained canned pineapple chunks to it. It's wonderful. And to be sure your pineapple chicken salad is at its best, make it with a truly fine salad dressing, Miracle Whip. Miracle Whip salad dressing has a perfect flavor all its own, a flavor you can't find in any other salad dressing. Get a jar of delicious, different-tasting Miracle Whip tomorrow. See what wonderful things it can do for your salad. This is the light. What a beautiful view from the veranda. Uh, this dollar cigar tastes fine. Hello, Mrs. Van der Gruber. Beautiful yacht you have there. Hello, Mr. Froppenshire. You must stop in for tea one day. No? So, dinner is your state? Sounds grand, old boy. Simply grand. I'll buzz over in my imported twin engine speedboat. Unc, Unc, are you awake? Hey, what's your fine? What's your rush? Huh? Isn't this keen? Yes, what's that? This is a perfect vacation. Sleeping on the ground in a good old pup tent. <laughs> Go back to sleep. Good night, folks. The Great Gildersleeve is played by Willard Waterman. The show is written by John Elliott, Andy White, and Paul West, and is transcribed. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Lillian Randolph, Mary Lee Robb, Tommy Cook, Arthur Q. Bryan, and Dick LeGrand. Musical composition by Jack Meekin. This is John Heaston saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next week and every week throughout the summer for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. What's your favorite kind of sandwich? Cheese, ham, chicken? Well, whichever it is, it'll taste better than ever with Miracle Sandwich Spread. Try it. See what a delicious lift Miracle Sandwich Spread gives your sandwich. Miracle Sandwich Spread is made by Kraft, from America's favorite salad dressing, Miracle Whip, and spicy relishes. For a really good yet thrifty sandwich, use Miracle Sandwich Spread alone. Get a jar tomorrow.
Miracle Sandwich Spread. Tonight, enjoy the best of Groucho on NBC.